Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the exciting roundtable discussion on leveraging almonds for growing health-conscious consumers in India. My name is Sudarsha Mazumda. I'm the director for India, South Korea, and Japan for Ramen Board of California. I'd like to thank all our esteemed participants and the audience for joining us this afternoon. As the demand for nutritious and natural food product grows, we are here to explore how almonds can play a pivotal role in supporting the health and wellness of Indian consumers. The Almond Board of California has long been dedicated to promoting the numerous benefits of almonds, not just from a nutritional standpoint, but also from a research-based approach. Today, we are delighted to have esteemed experts here to share the insights on this important topic. We're also privileged to have Mr. Ranjit Singh, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Food Processing Industries, to provide his perspective on how almonds fits into India's larger vision for food processing and public health. Mr. Singh plays a pivotal role in driving key initiatives within the ministry, particularly focusing on the mega food parks and old food park schemes. His responsibilities also extend to the creation and expansion of food processing and, uh, and preservation capacities, which are essential for strengthening India's food processing infrastructure and enhancing value addition to the sector. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Ranjit Singh for his keynote address. Thank you, uh, Mr. Majum Darsi. Uh, good, very good afternoon to all, and special greetings to all the esteemed panelists who are here. At the outset, I must confess, confess that I'm a great fan of almonds and also California almonds. So it was very nice when I saw the invite coming from uh, Mr. Majumdarji. So immediately I thought, yes, I would like to be there and I would like to hear as long as I can afford, given the other uh, schedule that is uh, provided to me for today's proceedings with so many bilateral meetings happening and all those things. At the outset, I, I extend my congratulations and thanks to the Almond Board of California for partnering, partnering with MOFPI and coming here, organizing this session. And we'll be discussing very important aspect, which we know almonds as a healthy snack, but how much to consume? and where to source. And plus, being a Ministry of Food Processing Industry, we come somewhere in between, between the production side or the import side and the, and the consumers. So how we can fit in there and uh, what, what is the scheme or assistance that we can provide in uh, providing stability and uh, more efficient food value chain. And uh, another thing I would like to confess is that uh, how I became fam fan of California almonds, particularly because of my experience having seen the almonds being produced in California. And apart from that, coming from an agricultural background, studied agriculture, so <coughs> I always think why, why can't we produce California almonds here, though we know that there are limitations which are there because of uh, the climate conditions that we have here. So. Our production is very limited, and it is only restricted to, I'll say only one state, mainly Jammu and Kashmir, that two in the Kashmir, and some almonds are being grown in uh, Himachal, and that's it. To, we can't uh, produce much, so we, we rely on imports. And thanks to platforms like uh, the e-commerce platform, we, where we can see, okay, the country of region and the place of region, so we can we get an opportunity to choose as well. So with this, um, it's, it's, a, it's an honor for me uh, to, hear, to be here this afternoon and represent the Ministry of Food Processing Industries and share the dais, this platform, with a very esteemed panel. The session on leveraging almonds for health-conscious consumers in India marks a very powerful moment as we come together to explore the potential of elements in shaping healthier, more conscious, health conscious, fit India, I would like to say. And uh, doctors here, they will, would like to listen to them. 
how how much how how we are benefited by by consuming almonds i'd also like to say that uh, we are uh, if we talk in the commercial terms i mean the market size is just unimaginable 145 crore people one almost reaching 1.5 billion and uh, we are still growing so there's a huge upscale upside to the market and demand plus the young citizens who are health conscious educated more aware about the about the nutritious food so th this is the way to go and almonds fit in uh, very well in that uh, diet plans almonds as we know they stand tall not just as a snack but as a symbol of health wellness responsible consumption with their unmatched nutrition value almonds are playing a critical role in transforming the way we approach the daily diets the thing i was uh, not surprised but uh, i would like to share that uh, india is the largest market for california almonds maybe thanks to almond board of california for their efforts and this has been uh, consistent for last 3 years and these shipments have doubled in last 7 years that indicates where the demand is going so there's always uh, i always think that there's only a way ahead and up various regarding our ministries and my role specifically we have uh, we run various schemes where we provide incentives to the industry and industry we we have we cover the entire spectrum of the scale starting with the small household units under the pm the pradhan mantri formulation of micro enterprises to the next stage of medium enterprises where, which are covered by the pradhan mantri kisan sampada yojana where we provide incentives up to 35% and 50% of the project costs to establish the units processing units covering all all the sectors of uh, food all sub sectors of the food sector sector mainly fruits and vegetables may it be dairy may it be fishery may it be animal husbandry and dairy so the aim is to support setting up of a good infrastructure quality infrastructure so that uh, the efficient the supply chain becomes efficient so once the supply chain is efficient then maybe the reach of any product for that matter and uh, elements they will they it will become much more efficient to cater to the smaller places maybe as of now we are seeing up to tier 2 cities i mean the block levels the e-commerce platforms they have penetrated but uh, now we need to go further down to the block levels and to the villages village level there we we need interventions and that's what uh, our intent is and that's what we do by supporting cluster based units we have identified clusters for various products different fruits different vegetables so we provide dedicated interventions in those clusters another aspect that we are very conscious is how to ensure quality in the entire value chain though there is a one way is the tight regulations and the strict implementation that is also being done taken care of by the ministry of health and the food standard Sa and safety food safety and standards authority of india we play a very little role i would say it's a much bigger by by supporting the uh, setting up of food testing laboratories and uh, you might have read in the recent budget which the honorable Fran finance minister uh, presented in july the government has announced that we will support 100 specialized food testing laboratories the the support extends to all the testing machines and plus some uh, eligible cost also for the civil works also apart from that we have an ongoing scheme of supporting the food irrigation units though irrigation is still a niche area where uh, there also needs uh, much more awareness to be created about the benefits of food irrigation but the one big benefit is that it takes away the requirement of using chemicals for uh, hygienization of various food products so we, again this this was announced in the in this year's budget so we will be supporting setting up of uh, 50 food irrigators food irrigation units and if you happen to visit our uh, pavilion in hall 14 
we'll see the, we have specially kept the three models of uh, different food irradiators that are uh, being that are, that have been commercialized and that are being used by various players so that that uh, and us is a big user of uh, irradiation uh, techniques for hygienization of their food products it it makes the supply chain efficient and it makes the food healthy more uh, consumer friendly this is these are few of the things how we uh, want to ensure the nutritious options are uh, available at affordable rates to every indian all from as i said from urban centers to the rural heartlands by promoting such robust integrated policies we want to lay the foundation for a healthier and more resi resilient india coming to the platform on which we are sitting standing and talking today that is the platform of world food india that provides us an opportunity to come across each other very come bring together the various players in the entire value chain of any product and any commodity related to the food sector so I, in my understanding it provides a very very vital platform which pro provided to us to deepen these discussions bringing together global and local stakeholders to sh shape the future of food and nutrition this platform serves as an unparalleled pl uh, platform fostering for fostering in depth dialogue as we are experiencing here uniting global and local stakeholders perfect example almond uh, almond board of california having a session here in world food india to collaboratively co collaboratively shape the future of food nutrition and sustainable growth in the industry this event transcends mere discussions but it also creates opportunities for meaningful partnerships that bridge innovation with tradition this is space where ideas are transformed into action paving the way for cutting edge advancements in food technology supply chain efficiency and consumer wellness by bringing these together industry pan by bringing the thought leaders industry pioneers policy makers and innovators world food india is not only defining the trajectory of food sector but also reinforcing india as india's role as a global leader in sustainable health conscious food processing the collaborations and insights exchanged here will undoubtedly drive new investments inspire transformative policies and set the foundation for a healthier and more re resilient global food ecosystem as a ministry we see ourselves as enablers of growth fost fostering an environment where innovation food safety and sustainable practices are at the forefront events like world food india offer us an opportunity to show india's strengths and potential as a global leader in food processing and agriculture i am very convinced with this statement simply because india the kind of uh, the size of the market that we have and then the potential to export because we are we have many efficiency we have many strengths especially the numbers that we have plus the appetite for uh, for our entrepreneurs to grow to grow bigger to increase in numbers that that is that is uh, something which uh, which is uh, supported by the international organizations like uh, imf and uh, becoming a third largest economy and aspiring uh, becoming a already fifth largest economy and uh, aspiring to be the third largest in near future that that shows the kind of potential that uh, india offers to the globe with these remarks i will say that the almond industry is a microcosm of the broader trends shaping our food sector where tradition meets innovation and consumer expectations are rising as we continue to champion elements for health conscious consumers we remain committed to formulating policies that support this growth positioning india as a dynamic force in the global food landscape and i look forward to very engaging discussion and get the rich insights from very esteemed panel who are here which will emerge from our discussions today we can chart a path that not only benefits our industries but also transforms the lives of millions across india and the world with these remarks i thank you all for a very patient hearing and once again i thank the almond board of california for giving me this opportunity to stand before you and share few of my 
insights with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh, for your insightful address and sharing the ministry's vision and efforts in supporting the growth and innovation within the Indian food processing sector. I'm actually thrilled that you're already aware of California almonds and you're eating a, a California almonds. So what you're speaking for is coming from your personal experiences. Uh, apart from everything else you said, I loved one phrase you used where tradition meets innovation. And that is what we're trying to do in India. How do we work with the Indian tradition, but how do you also bring it in innovative forms to the Indian consumers, for which I think our discussion is on uh, today. And we'd love to engage with you as we go forward, uh, as we start working on ideas which work for India rather than just for global. It has to work for what India needs and what India likes. So I think that's what objective is. Uh, your leadership is pivotal in creating an uh, in creating opportunities for nutrient-dense products like almonds, which have the potential to address the growing health needs of the Indian consumers. We truly appreciate available contributions and support. Now I'll come to the next part of the session, which is really the panel discussion. I'm going to introduce the panelists one by one. Um, and these are panelists who bring with them diverse expertise in the areas of nutrition, food processing, and healthcare. I will begin with Dr. Anup Misra. Dr. Anup Misra is the chairman of Fortis C. Doc Center of Excellence for Diabetes, Metabolic Diseases, and Endocrinology in New Delhi. Dr. Misra is also the director of the National Diabetes, Obesity, and Cholesterol Foundation, as well as the Diabetes Foundation India. He has published more than 375 research papers in top journals internationally. As analyzed by Stanford University, he is considered to be among the top 2% scientists in the area of diabetes research globally. He has served in top advisory committees for diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and, uh, and, uh, and nutrition in India. Dr. Misra has received prestigious accolades, including the Dr. B.C. Roy Award in 2006 and the Padma Shri in 2007. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Misra to the dais. Our next esteemed panelist is Dr. Padma Venkat. Dr. Padma Venkat is a professor and the Dean of the School of Health Sciences and Technology, UPS, in Dehradun. Dr. Venkat has over 31 years of experience in microbiology, biochemistry, phytochemistry, Ayurveda, and public health. Her research focuses on wellness and nutrition, safe drinking water, and anemia. Dr. Padma, please join us on the dais. I'd like to introduce Dr. Anand Ramanathan. Dr. Ramanathan is a partner and the consumer products and retail sector leader at Deloitte India. Dr. Ramanathan has over 20 years of experience in both industry and consulting. He has led over 100 engagements specializing in strategy formulation and business transformation. Dr. Ramanathan is an expert in growth strategy, business plans, operating models, and implementation support for clients in South Asia's consumer products and retail sectors. Now join me putting your hands together for Dr. Ramanathan as he joins us on the rise. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to introduce our esteemed panelist, Dr. Komal Chohan. Dr. Chohan is a professor of nutrition at the National Institute of Food Technology, Entrepreneurship and Management, NIFTM, at Kundli Sonipat, with over two decades of teaching and research experience. Dr. Chuan has expertise in nutraceuticals, functional foods, and nutritional biochemistry, with a focus on malnutrition and non-communicable diseases like diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and obesity. She has led projects funded by UNICEF, UGC, DST, SERB, and various government bodies, and has published extensively in national and international forums. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Chuan to the dais. Uh, can I have the, can I have my presentation up, please?
Thank you. So before we begin the discussions, I'm taking a few minutes to present some key insights on the topic at hand, which will help frame our conversation, provide some context for the discussion ahead. What I've done is I've kept it brief. I've kept it without data. I just want to keep it quick so that we can really spend time to hear from our esteemed panelists. So we know that the health and wellness market is growing rapidly in India. It was already growing, but with the coming of the pandemic, it really, got, uh, it really started growing much more. People started getting much more sensitized towards the health. And there's some three trends driving it. One is rising disposable income and urbanization. So as you know, from 1991, when the economy opened up, the Indian GDP started growing. And over the last few years, India has been the fastest growing major economy in the world. What that has meant is a lot of people with higher disposable income. But what has also happened is rapid urbanization as urban population continues to grow, partly because of organic reasons, partly because there's continuous migration happening from rural to urban. The net impact of all of this is estimated there are 90 million people who have higher disposable income, who are aware of uh, non-communicable diseases and very concerned about it. And they're doing something about it, as you can see, because the functional food market is growing very dramatically. There are some estimates that the functional food market is expected to grow at 14.7% a year from here to 2030. We also know that Indian diets lack adequate amount of protein. There is a protein deficiency. In fact, there are some estimates that almost 80% of the people are not having adequate protein in the diet. Now, as people get concerned, they're looking for more protein-enriched kind of diets is one of the trends which is happening. But the, another big enabler for the health and wellness industry to grow in India is the growth of digital and wellness apps. Again, the pandemic really switched it to a different gear. People were stuck inside. They were desperate to take care of the health because by that time, vaccines had not yet come in. And they couldn't go out to exercise, so they turned to these apps to guide them. And the apps give a lot of useful information, whether it's on, uh, on diets or tips on what you need to do. It's estimated that the digital wellness apps are going to grow at 13.1%, and this is in terms of revenue, between now and 2030. There are also emerging dietary trends. Now, there are, of course, far more uh, number of trends, but I've just captured a few as being illustrative of what we're going to talk about. There's increased demand for fortified foods, from salt to wheat flour, to rice, to maize flour, to milk, to cooking oil. We have a lot of fortified foods in India. Partly led by consumer demand as people are demanding uh, fortified foods to get the nutrition, but also with a huge amount of push from the government of India to, as the government tries to get people to get the right amount of nutrition into their diets. Also, we know India has a high vegetarian population, but the latest buzzword has become natural uh, plant-based foods. And that's growing as we feed, believe that that's the best way to get your nutrition. So as a process of this, on a low base, we've also seen the growth of the vegan population, which is happening in India. The shift towards super grain consumption, which is happening, we know that, and I think the best example is to see how the millet consumption growth has happened over the last few years. Actually, India, as all of you know, used to have a lot of millets a few centuries back, but then we shifted towards uh, processed wheat and rice, and it's only now, uh, and I, I would commend the government of India's efforts in this, in, as people are getting aware of the benefits of having millets. And it's actually everywhere. I mean, you go to a, a high-level store, you see so many millet products. Yesterday, uh, we were fortunate to go to the Niftum uh, booth, and the amount of millet-based products we see was really good. And they were really tasty, we sampled them they were really tasty uh, formulations. You go to a breakfast uh, buffet today, you're likely to see a ragi idli. Or in fact, I was recently in a Hyderabad airport and I saw a shop selling only millet-based products. Now that, apart from people buying, a lot of information is going out to people who even who are walking by. People are bringing it home and figuring out how to use millets. For example, I'm saying anecdotally from my house, we have stopped having wheat flour chapati. We always add millet flour to the wheat before the chapati is made, and different people are finding different ways to add it. But it's not just millets. Look at what's happening to oats. That's going, going up. Quinoa, which people were not having a few years ago, 
we begin to find the increase. The base is small, but the increasing trends are very, very clear. Protein I've talked about, so I won't address it now. But another big change is, on a small base, healthy snacking has started coming in. Traditionally, what people did was that they would say, okay, if I have to get my health, I get from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Snacking, I would let myself go. That's my indulgent moment. But as people have got sensitized, they're saying, no, I need to have healthy snacking as well and move away from a lot of snacks because bulk of the Indian snacks are high in salt, high in sugar, high in saturated fats. But some people are saying that I need to get my healthy snacking as well. Uh, they need to be high in nutrition. They need to be high in dietary fiber and low in carbs. And the last is people are starting aware of celiac diseases. And therefore, there's a growing demand for gluten-free products. And when you see all these spaces, we see almonds as a natural way, is one of the food products which can help out in a lot of them. We are highly nutritious, and I'm going to talk about it. We are very nutrient-dense. We are, of course, natural plant-based food. Um, uh, we are very dense in protein. I'm going to talk about that so soon. We are a nu nutritious, convenient snack which can be picked up, and obviously, we are gluten-free. So if you look at almonds, they really have a very rich nutrient profile. For every single serving of almonds, which is one ounce or 28 grams, it has six grams of protein, making it a very protein-dense food. We have healthy amount of dietary fiber, which is so important for gut health. And if you look at a fat profile that's very strong, every single serving of almonds, we have 9.5 grams of monounsaturated fats, which are the best fats for the human body. And if you include the polyunsaturated uh, fats, it takes the total unsaturated fats, we have close to 13 grams in a single serving of almonds. We have the highest amount of vitamin E, which is a very important antioxidant across all nuts. And we have very high portions of potassium, calcium, magnesium, riboflavin, niacin, phosphorus, and iron. In fact, almonds has got 14 essential nutrients. Quite clearly, if you're having a product with so many good nutrients, you can only have a beneficial effects to the human body on its consumption. What the Almond Board of California has been doing is to try to understand these benefits. So we have a nutrition research program which we've been running from early 1990s, where we fund projects not only in the US but across the world to understand the different benefits of consuming almonds. On the basis of the work we funded, there have been over 200 peer-reviewed papers which have come out in the leading scientific journals. Today, we are fortunate to have Dr. Anup Misra with us with his deep knowledge uh, of uh, health of almonds and of, of who has done extensive research. We'll get his wisdom today for all of you. We also know almonds have been used across centuries in India. Our ancestors used to have almonds. There's a lot of ancient wisdom about almonds, and that's been captured in the Ayurvedic texts of Ayurveda. Uh, Siddha and Yunani in the ancient texts have got it. And today we are very lucky to have Dr. Padma Venkat, who's done research in these areas, who will talk about what are the mentions of almonds, what are the benefits of almonds, which are ancient medicinal texts talk about. Now, almonds uh, have, a, uh, uh, have got a variety of forms. It comes, uh, comes in, gives in a lot of versatility. So apart from the versatility of almonds, its texture and its nutrition, a uh, lot of product developers find it a very interesting, nutritious, dense product to work with when they come with new formulations. So today, uh, uh, today we'll have Dr. Komal Chauhan, who with her wide experience will talk about what are the benefits for food developers to consider when they're thinking of almonds, and what are the characteristics of almonds which can be leveraged. Now coming to global trends. Now, as people have got to understand the different nutrition benefits of eating almonds, the love for almonds and products with almonds has been increasing. And because of this and because of the versatility which almond has, food developers have loved developing new products with almond introduction. And now on an average year, we have around 12,000 almond introductions being introduced at a global level, which is higher than any other nut. And almonds are winning in most key categories, which is bakery, bars, cereal, and dairy. And in the dairy alternative market, almonds dominates with 890 introductions versus 544 introductions for all the other nuts combined. Now let's talk about India. We know India has a long-standing tradition of almonds, and the tradition has been passed on from generation to generation through the mothers in the house. So my grandmom gave almonds to her mom, who gave it to me, I gave it to my 
children. And the tradition is people have whole raw almonds in the morning and quite often is soaked overnight in a bowl of water and peel in the morning before consumption. And with the belief that it's good for brain development and provides energy through the day. So mothers give almonds to the children hoping they'll do well at school and at play. But what our researchers are showing that this habit has moved from just being given to children to all members of the house. So today we have adults, we have teens, and people are having almonds uh, in this manner. Almonds are also gifted during festivals, as we know. And this gifting of almonds is only increasing as people are getting more and more health sensitized. So what's happening is, as people are knowing more about diabetes, they're switching away from giving sweets as part of the gift and looking for healthy products. And almonds are one of the good healthy products that they are looking at. And it's also given during weddings, so not just uh, Diwali, which is of course the biggest festival. It goes along with wedding invites. And today, there are a lot of Indian sweets which also have almonds, which is badam halwa, all of us know about, and many other products. And badam milk, which is a dairy-based application, is a very, very popular product consumed in India. And manufacturers are behaving the same as in the US. From 2015, we found a four times increase in number of new almond products being launched into the Indian product. And along the way, we've overtaken other countries. And India is the country in Asia which has the highest amount of almond introductions. And today, again, we're fortunate to have Dr. Uh, Ramanathan with us, who's going to talk from his huge experience on what's happening in the food processing space and what are the opportunities for almonds in this space. If you look at it by category, almonds leads across nuts for four categories. But even if you're talking about snacking where we're behind peanuts and cashews, we still have a very high amount of almond introduction. With that, I'll actually move over so that you can actually hear from our esteemed panelists. Not diving, I'm going to first dive deeper into the health benefits of almonds and the role in promoting wellness. And for which I'll begin my conversation with Dr. Uh, Mistra to share his expert insights with us. So Dr. Mistra, you've been practicing for several years. What are the kind of lifestyle diseases you see and how has this been changing over the years? Thank you, first of all, uh, I thank you and Armand Board of California for inviting me and uh, sharing my thoughts in front of these uh, very young and uh, very, you know, thirsty for knowledge people. Uh, the last 40 years, in, first in all Indian Institute of Medical Sciences and now in the FOTIS, and having researched uh, the lifestyle diseases for the last 40 years, um, I've seen a, a tremendous change in the trends of the diseases. Uh, previously, in 1990s, we did not know that obesity is something to reckon with in India. And we talked about, I was one of the first one to present the a tangible uh, national control program for diabetes in 1990s to government of India. At that time, some people said, what are, what are you talking about? I mean, you're talking about obesity, we have malnutrition, we have anemia, we have maternal and child health. At that time, those were the major issues and nobody, nobody was talking about obesity or diabetes at that particular time. From 1990s, the economy opened, then subsequently obesity came, the diabetes. From 1990 to two, 2021, 31 years, and we have analyzed the data and published in a, a top journal called Metabolism recently, just a couple of days back. And uh, so just to give you statistics, we were number two as far as uh, diabetes, number three as far as diabetes is concerned, and we are number one in terms of uh, disease-adjusted life years, these are the uh, deaths caused of due to disease. So on top of the line as far as the diabetes is concerned. We are also, nobody had heard of a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, the fatty liver disease at that time. Now we are number one. And again, as far as the dailies are concerned, disease-adjusted life years. 
We are number two as far as hypertension is concerned, number two as far as the high, high cholesterol uh, uh, levels are concerned. Uh, so these are some of the things which have moved on rapidly in Indian scenario and all lead to cardiovascular disease. So this is a tsunami that we are handling at this point of time. It is difficult for government to handle this. It is difficult for the, in the private practice to handle this. And this is costing India enormous amount of money. And we have, uh, I'm an editor of a journal where we published recently uh, a cost analysis of diabetes. And it is increasing, increasing. And each person who's a middle uh, income class group or low middle income class group has to pay five to 10 percent of the total salary for, e for drugs, for going to the doctor, and if it develops complication, it becomes 20 to 25 percent of the total. That is the type of thing that we are seeing at this point of time. So while the undernutrition is on the decline somewhat, uh, and the communicable diseases are on the decline, the non-communicable diseases, and which I include cancer also as one of the non-communicable diseases because 30 types of cancer are related to obesity, are on the up as far as India is concerned. And unless we do a very in-depth analysis and have a will to control this, uh, and recently I have had several discussion with uh, some of the people in the uh, Ministry of uh, uh, Health, uh, Government of India, who, people who make the policy, uh, and they also agree totally with it. So we have to deal with it, and the time is now. Thank you. I also want to ask another question based on this, because if uh, we know that India has a young population, median age is 28 years. So how do you see these non-communicable diseases impacting the younger generation and seeing increasing trends, et cetera, as we thought we could hear from you? Uh, 2003 and 2004, we published one of the first paper on childhood obesity in Indian population and drew attention of government to that this is what is happening in India. And at that time, unknown to anybody in the world, the type two diabetes was occurring in the childhood also. And we were again at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, we published one of the first paper uh, in, in India and some of the very few, among the very few papers in the world. So this is what has been happening for last two decades, but it has come forth in a major manner now. Now, it is not unusual in my usual OPD to see at least three to four people who are 20 to 25 years of age and who have developed diabetes. Now, most of them have a family history of diabetes, but also 100% of them are obese. There is no question about it. Despite what you said, that the trends of healthy diets, etc., are increasing, Unfortunately, many of the people, they, they are aware of it. There is no practice of it. So there is a great chasm between what is awareness and what is practice. And these are young people also are consuming alcohol in an increasing manner, also smoking. So all sorts of unhealthy practices are occurring. Mm -hmm. Now, sometime back, we, uh, we, uh, we uh, wrote a paper that Everybody about 25 years of age should have a screening for diabetes. Now, this is uh, in contradiction to Government of India's current pro uh, program, which says 30 years. We said, no, not 30 years. It should be 25 years. And this is what, in fact, current worldwide situation is 18 years. So we should screen younger people we should do much more so that they practice in a healthy manner, their lifestyle, their exercise, their diet, and get uh, that uh, screening done at an early age so that we can, we can catch hold of a condition called pre-diabetes, as I'll talk about later, uh, and reverse this. Reverse this trend to healthy people. Uh, reverse if they have developed diabetes, reverse to normal glucose regulation. This is what our aim is. Yeah. Is uh, used to live sometime in thousand million and that thousand years before Christ. So Charaka Samhita was written during that time in the Palms manuscripts, and of course they have been uh, transcribed and then now translated, and it's available in English as well. Um, so a thousand year back, what was mentioned about 
Amins, did they figure out, figure in, in those texts? Uh, I was quite surprised. The detailed description about Amins in uh, Ayurvedic texts. And uh, they call it Sufala. And I just want to give you a context about Ayurveda. Ayurveda uh, uh, is mostly talks about wellness and nutrition, how to live your life, um, achar rasayana, which means how do you, what is your lifestyle? And so it gives you hints about how to live well, prevent diseases, promote health, right from when uh, you, the baby is conceived up to when uh, they are aged, you have different kinds of uh, prescriptions which have been mentioned. And uh, so, uh, no, an Indian Materia Medica, which is of the uh, different kinds of um, plants and other food items which have been included in the Ayurvedic text, no item would be entered into the Materia text, uh, med Medica unless it has been tested out by the uh, scholars. So, uh, but their way of testing is very different from uh, the modern way which I'm used to. So it's completely different epistemology to what biomedicine is. And while uh, biomedical uh, sciences, we tend to look at molecules and uh, structures and chemicals, uh, they tend to look at the whole body holistically and uh, see what is there, what is the effect of any material on the body. So they test by starting by uh, looking at the taste Rasa, Guna, Virya, Vipaka, which means Rasa, properties of the material. Guna is the property of the material. Then Virya is the potency. Vipaka is the after digestion. So for any material which goes into the materia medica, they have to figure out what this is. And they have done it for almonds as well. And they have said it is Madhur Rasa. That means it's sweet in taste. And it has got gunas, which is sneha, snigda, which means unctuous. It leads to un unctuousness in the body. And it, the virya is ushnavirya. It causes heat in the body. And vipaka, which is post-digestion. You have, sometimes you feel belches, which are like acidic belches. But this has got madhura, uh, post-digestion. Post that means it is sweet in action. So these are the properties which determine the pharmacological activities of, the, uh, of any drug. So according to this, you have various pharmacological activities. Yeah, I was uh, thinking if you can uh, go deeper into the pharmacological benefits as well as are there any therapeutic applications? Right, yeah, of course they have mentioned uh, in the text uh, about various uh, pharmacological activities based on these properties which uh, I described. Some of them include uh, strength giving, balya, brimhana, brimhana means nourishing, uh, medhya, which means it's good, good for cognition, and it is uh, vrishya, which is mentioned in Yunani and Siddha texts as well that it is good for vrishya. Vrishya means aphrodisiac. Uh, it is uh, good for um, uh, varnya, which is complexion. It is good as a, a complexion enhancing material. And, um, and also for kesia. Kesia is for hair, hair promoting also. So I'm, I'm sure that many of you would be very fam familiar with the brahmi, amla, and the, you know, shirin, badam, and so on. Almond uh, oil is used very extensively in our tradition. So this is for hair promotion as well. So uh, and there are many uh, therapeutic applications. As singly, they have been mentioned that, as uh, uh, Sudarshan was mentioning, you have to soak it overnight and have badam in the morning, and you can get, have about 10 to 15 grams of it, maybe a fistful of it every day uh, is good for health. And uh, uh, as therapeutic applications, they have mentioned for many things, including paralysis, palsy, and uh, for uh, any itchiness of the skin, and uh, for any problem with impotency. So there are applications, but with compound formulations. For memory, it's been mentioned as well. Jeevani Agritam is one which has got almonds in it, but they have other, other uh, ingredients as well. Mahamayura Agritam is something which is very uh, well known in, and it's been written in the Charak Samhita that it can be used for palsy, anything related to debility. Debility caused by any of the diseases like uh, prameha. Prameha means diabetes. 
So they don't have direct reference of uh, uh, diabetes because you don't have it in the way that we are looking at it currently. But they have mentioned that you get weakness in diabetes or anything which is to do with lung respiratory disorders, which is for um, like TB. This, when you have debility, you can use this Mahamayura Gritam. Yeah, as you look at the guidance provided in the text, what are some of the most relevant current health management elements that you see? Right, I think um, many of it, uh, Dr. Mishra has already pointed out that it is actually, uh, I would say India is facing a double burden still. Uh, communicable as well as non-communicable diseases are uh, rampant. And I feel that 20% uh, maybe of the population is aware of what is good living. They practice um, good lifestyle and eat healthy diet. But 80% of our population uh, is not practicing it, not aware of what is to be done. I feel that needs to change. And I think we have also lost our roots with the tradition. So we have, lo we have become very fast paced and moving towards fast foods and eating all kinds of foods. And uh, in this context, it is very important that we also look at uh, certain efforts that uh, government organizations are doing, like the FSSAI is doing, where they are trying to find out the food safety. And if you look at the road foods, the street foods, which we all pride in uh, saying, we all are uh, sort of uh, have tasted it. And it is, of course, once in a way, it's very good. But uh, we uh, tend to overdo it. And I think we have more restaurants than what we need and the street foods, which are almost everywhere. So um, it is for different reasons, different sets of the population use. Like the uh, people like us who are more aware use it once in a way. But people who, are, uh, who can't afford, they use these foods all the time. So uh, I think we have to uh, probably look for some things which are uh, affordable, which are holistic, and uh, uh, which are uh, nutritious for everybody. So I think this uh, trend, which is like fast food trend, and snacking on um, things which are fried, and so on, I think we'll have to reduce that and uh, go for more, more holistic eating, uh, eating nuts, which are like almonds, and other nuts, which are also highly nutritious. So I think these kind of practices will have to be promoted. So uh, I'm sure that with all the youngsters here who are going to be educated and who are going to be working on this, if they can take it up and then pass on their messages to their colleagues and uh, friends, and it will obviously percolate to, the, uh, to all of them. And I think if we can make this change, others will also follow. So I feel uh, this trend will have to be changed, the lifestyle and eating. Uh, thank you, Dr. Padma, for your informed perspectives on the nutritional and cultural significance of almonds. Next, actually, we'll explore the market dynamics and emerging trends in the food processing sector with Dr. Ramanathan. So Dr. Ramanathan, with extensive experience in consumer products and retail, could you please elaborate on what you're seeing of the growing health and wellness and dietary trends in India, and what are the drivers of these trends? Sure. So thanks, Sudarshan. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I will focus on some of the aspects which haven't been touched upon. Uh, uh, Right, uh, we've all spoken a lot about health, but if you look at the Indian food processing sector, uh, uh, you'll see a couple of trends which, uh, uh, which can really help almond as a category, right? So the first one is uh, uh, we are going towards a market where there is a willingness to pay premiums, right? So across the board, if you look at the last two years, what happened was that post the pandemic, uh, people, uh, affluent households had money to spend because they didn't have too many avenues prior to that. Uh, and uh, mass households were a little stressed because uh, uh, they were into, I mean, indebtedness was high, et cetera, right? And therefore, the economy, at least on the consumer side, grew a lot on the affluent household consumption. And hence, we saw a lot of premiumization across categories. You speak to any FMCG company, they'll tell you premiumization is something they're really looking at. 
And uh, therefore, if you look at almonds, it has a connotation of being premium, right? You just add almonds to any, uh, any food item, it becomes premium. And hence, it's a very good trend to capitalize on for the sector. It also has these auxiliary benefits of health, et cetera, which can be marketed, right? So as a marketeer, uh, getting that premium for your product, almond works beautifully as an ingredient. The second trend, and it was briefly touched by uh, uh, Dr. Padma when she mentioned that almond has both uh, intrinsic as well as its extrinsic benefits, right? So it's good for your skin, which is ap applied. It's an external uh, benefit. And it's good for uh, uh, ingestion. When you eat an almond, it has a lot of health benefits, right? Very few products uh, are good on both these sides, which have external and internal benefits. So in India, neem has worked right, as a platform of products, right? Similarly, turmeric has worked as a platform of products. So you'll have a cream too, and you'll have a food product too, right? So almond is one of those, right? So you combine that for platform play. So can a, a lot of FMCG companies look at platforms because it's efficient from a marketing standpoint, because there is some benefit which is already sold to the consumer, and therefore, as a platform, you're able to add it to multiple categories and sweat that investments that you make a lot more efficiently, right? So this is the second big uh, advantage which uh, Almond has uh, as a benefit. The third area is uh, when we look at uh, 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 the food industry, there's a lot of organization which is happening. So uh, what do we mean by organization? Typically, in FMCG industry, you had like two players, right, or three players. They were all oligopolistic kind of markets, right? So between them, they would have 80% of the market. What we are increasingly seeing is that, A, uh, uh, modern trade plus e-commerce is having a big impact. I mean, yesterday I was with a FMCG company where 50% of their sale is coming from modern trade and e-commerce in urban India, in southern markets of urban, uh, southern urban markets. Similarly, there was another company which has grown uh, its e-commerce plus modern trade from 5% to 22% in the last five years, right? So increasingly, we are seeing a lot of D2C brands private label brands, these are all new brands which are coming and because it's easier to get to the consumer using e-commerce, it is improved accessibility, there's a lot more competition in the FMCG categories. And hence, we have a long tail of products where uh, there's a premium on R&D. Traditionally, in the last 50 years, FMCG was all about sales, about distribution, about brand building, but now R&D is like one of those really critical focus areas, and it was touched upon in terms of new product formulation. I think this is the time to be in the India market, and it's not just FMCG. A lot of us are eating outside. We're using food service apps, right? There's a lot of innovation happening in the Horeca segment too, right? So you combine FMCG with Horeca and a lot of new product innovation which is happening, right? And hence, almond in its various forms. And in many instances, uh, it's not just a positive way. It's also a substitute for <coughs> products which might not be very healthy otherwise. Or where there might be, uh, say, for example, there's a lot of lactose intolerance in the market, right? So is almond a substitute for that? Uh, other nuts which might have not as healthy uh, 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 nutrition profile, right? Can you substitute almonds with it? So there's also the substitute effect which will help almonds to grow, right? So these are all avenues in NPD which almonds can utilize, right? So this is where we are from a food processing uh, sector standpoint, clearly very interesting times. And needless to say, all the health benefits that were spoken about will further add on to almonds as a processing opportunity. No, I think that's, uh, I think the premiumization we do see, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of food companies are coming with almond introductions. So that's that's really good, along with the strong knowledge of almonds. Uh, the question really is that now when we, do you see a difference in uh, how people are taking uh, processed food across generations, older people versus the younger people, are you seeing some uh, differences between them? Oh, yes. So uh, there's a lot more focus now, again, post the pandemic on ready to eat, ready to cook, right? And hence, uh, we're seeing people are willing to pay a convenience premium for convenience. And hence, uh, again, the willingness is a lot more on the young uh, population, which is also very experience seeking, right? So new flavors, new formats, all of these, uh, 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 there's a greater willingness to experiment. And there's also this behavior which wants to experiment, right? To try out variety seeking behavior has like really gone up. The second thing we are seeing is a lot of impulse buying, right? Even categories which were traditionally staples, uh, uh, you have more choice now, and therefore you're willing to experiment, and th uh, that's the reason you've had such great success for some of the quick commerce uh, platforms, right? So that's the second area where uh, uh, I think uh, 
um, there's uh, impulse as a category and the discretionary income available right to spend on impulse has like really gone up hence snacking etc we'll see some of the biggest growths in the country the third big area is also uh, uh, food is treated as an important aspect of wellness how good the, your health is is also an intake and that's also from traditional practice in terms of saying uh, what you eat kind of defines you and hence a lot of focus on things like gut health for example a lot of new formats uh, for promoting uh, gut health uh, for looking at day-to-day -day wellness right which comes from the ingredients that you use right hence uh, that's the third aspect and the last bit is sustainability. I think the next generation is willing to pay a premium for sustainable products, for ethical sourcing, for more responsible consumption. I think all of that is very different from how earlier generations used to look at sustainability. So these are some of the key trends from a consumer standpoint um, between the young and the old. Yeah, uh, I would like to switch it to the manufacturing side uh, because you know in India we have small scale sector, medium scale sector, large scale sector, uh, with different levels of distribution, et cetera. So what according to you would be the different roles played by each as we go to the next stage of armed um, introductions? In sure. India? So in India, if you look at uh, the size of agribusiness to the size of, of our agricultural sector to the size of food processing, it's typically about 1 is to 1.5 as a ratio. If you look at the Western countries, you take a market like the US, for example, it's about 1 is to 3 to 1 is to 5, depending on which country you look at, right? So as the economy grows, as we as incomes grow, you will see that food processing as a sector in terms of size and value addition will really grow. And uh, that's the big area where uh, uh, there are two kinds of trends which are happening. In the past, we used to focus a lot on mega food processing parks, and there was a lot of focus on scale. Now what we are realizing is it's better to have distributed small manufacturing closer to the market where you're more responsive to the market, right? And therefore you're seeing a lot of micro food processing facilities develop. And the second aspect is specialization, right? In the past, uh, what hap used to happen is you used to talk about one food cluster. Whereas now you have a snacking cluster, you will have a cluster which is focused on a certain ingredient which is uh, uh, prevalent in that region. See, when it comes to food, you'll see that a lot of consumption is also localized, right? Uh, uh, a lot of regional brands, you typically wouldn't have too many national brands. You will have unorganized bakeries, you'll have unorganized uh, kind of players who are organizing, right? So there's a lot of regional play and hence the role of MSMEs becomes really very important as a category. And uh, closely linked to that, sometimes supply creates demand. For many categories of food, getting the right commodity at the right price itself is a big challenge, right? And therefore, you see farmer producer organizations and all of them also play a role in building a certain product category, right? So it is not just the large corporations. The policy addresses to a large extent. I mean, you have PLI schemes and all of that. So the la and many MNCs, for example, have access to resources, right? But it's not just the large players. It's how do you get down to the medium-sized uh, enterprises, the, uh, M, uh, the small-scale enterprises, which is really very critical from a food cluster standpoint. And the third is obviously to look at farmer producer organizations and, uh, uh, and uh, link farm to, uh, to the fork in a sense, right? Uh, so you've seen all of these aggregators who will source uh, fresh produce, add value to it by making it convenient for you. Maybe uh, it could be something as simple as grading sorting to moving to ready to cook where they cut things for you and then ready to eat where they've processed it into a very local variant of whatever food that is getting consumed, right? So you will see a lot of uh, effort to promote this kind of consumption which is closer to the market. Again, we are coming with vegetable clusters, etc. right? So a lot of our urban demand, you're going to see uh, uh, focus around building an ecosystem around urban supply for this demand that comes. So these are going to be some of the critical trends from a manufacturing perspective. I have just one more question, though you already touched upon parts of it is, we heard from Dr. Mistra and Dr. Padma about that how, uh, I mean, how healthy it is to eat almonds, right? So what is the opportunity to leverage this in the food processing sector? Some idea of what are the kind of benefits the food processing sector is really talking about? Because Amazon has a lot of benefits, but not that everything is going out. So what are you seeing out there? Sure. Uh, so uh, specifically, when you look at uh, uh, almonds as an uh, ingredient, couple of trends, right, from a health standpoint. See, during the pandemic, what we saw is that uh, uh, why did all of these D2C brands and private labels develop? 
because you didn't have organized players catering to that, right? And therefore, the 1MGs of the world, etc., uh, they came up with private labels. And that, if you look at it as a category, that grew 6x during that period when the overall market grew 1.5x, right? So you will see uh, a lot of focus on uh, both FMCG as well as pharma companies to look at this intersection of where health meets food. Right, and therefore, uh, I think it's not enough to just focus on the FMCG companies. Pharma companies are also getting into OTC as a category, yeah. right? And they're getting into food as a category. So that is going to be an important area. And what is it that they promote almonds for? Right, we spoke of some of the things which is skin, uh, I mean, hair health, for example. We spoke of it being ingested for better. Uh, uh, the point about uh, uh, sweetness to acidic foods. In fact, one of the things about processed food consumption in India is it leads to a lot of gastrointestinal issues, right? And therefore, almond for gut health is a big proposition. The third area is also to look at uh, sports nutrition, right? Mm -hmm. India as a category is become, uh, as a country, is becoming a lot more aware of sports, uh, and there are a lot more people looking at uh, nutrition for uh, uh, sports, right? So that's a new age category where as part of weight management, as part of sports nutrition, you're having almonds as an ingredient, right? So these are all some of the key areas where almond is playing a role beyond the traditional areas. But again, how can you, I mean, just look at uh, uh, look at our traditional snacks, our traditional sweets, our uh, chickies, for example. There's a bunch of local cuisine, which is very local in each of these different areas, where on adding almonds, you kind of make it festive and celebratory, and therefore it adds to the health quotient of some of these snacks, right? When you yeah. uh, when you add almond to it beyond just the premiumness uh, that it adds. So thank you, Dr. Ramanathan, for your comprehensive insights in the food processing sector, consumer trends, and government initiatives. So now to further explore the innovative practice and opportunities in the food <coughs> processing sector, let's now turn to Dr. Chauhan. Dr. Chauhan. First, let's hear from you on how the food processing industry is adapting to the increasing consumer preference for healthier and natural products. Thank you, Sudarshan, and thank you, Amun Board of California, for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to talk on this platform. Uh, regarding the preferences for the consumers uh, for, uh, in uh, context to the food processing industries, what we are actually developing is the value-added products. We have informed choices. So everybody is well aware what is to be eaten, as rightly mentioned by Anand, that what we eat, we are. So the uh, informed choices actually is to be done. And the food processing gives you the correct thing, that is the value-added products that we are developing. Like we have different categories for baked products, like we are using almond flour into different baked products. Then we are adding this uh, almond flour into the um, confectionery products also, like bars, candies, so that the children who were actually consuming chocolates, rather than consuming those chocolates, let us con like force or con like uh, tell our children that they should not consume those chocolates or the things that are high in sugar. They should consume these products that have high values in, them in terms of proteins, in terms of uh, monounsaturated fatty acids. And besides that, we are also promoting this ready-to-eat, ready-to-cook pr products, wherein we can actually value add these uh, almonds. And not even this, uh, including the desserts and the puddings also. As we rightly mentioned, the moment we add almonds to any product, it becomes premium. So then these are the things where we need to give, give the uh, consumers the uh, right choices that these are the products available and how food processing can enhance the nutritive value as well as the retention of these uh, micronutrients and the other nutrients by processing. Yeah, in fact, uh, leading from there is really trying to understand what else is the food processing industry doing to promote healthier food practices and what is the role NIFTM is playing in this process? NIFTM uh, is contributing in various aspects, like first is the fortification. Yeah. Uh, basically, the fortification is adding those new micronutrients that are actually not present in them. So it is not only by adding those micronutrients, if we supplement these uh, like uh, almonds into different products, like traditional as well as ready-to-eat or ready-to-cook foods, what will have, it will enhance the nutritive value. 
सो बेसिकली एडिंग द माइक्रो न्यूट्रेंट फ्रॉम आउटसाइड और सप्लीमेंटिंग द ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग लाइक प्रोडक्ट एंड देन कंज्यूमिंग इट एज अ होल दैट विल ऑल्सो एनहेंस और प्रोवाइड्स यू द बेसिक न्यूट्रिशन सो फर्स्ट इज द फोर्टिफिकेशन देन वी आर ऑल्सो यूजिंग लाइक वी कैन यूज नॉवल प्रोसेसिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज टू एनहेंस द न्यूट्रिशन वैल्यू the to retain the micronutrients to enhance the shelf stability of the products or the storage stability as rightly mentioned by dr padma like uh, almonds have alkalinity and mm-hmm. like alkaline foods are better for the gut so we also need to maintain all the like during processing so whatever happens is there are some of the micronutrients or the nutrients are like heat labile photo labile so during processing we need to see that all the micronutrients or the other nutrients are retained the flavor profile is retained the bioactive profile is retained so all these things have to be taken care so first is like fortification then is novel processing technology to enhance its nutritional value and the storage stability so we are like doing that and then uh, nut- uh, nistrum is also contributing in sports nutrition like we are developing certain products which are for like specially uh the school children that are like 11 to 17 years old like uh, for example they the, the requirement for the proteins is high during that period and for the training phase for the recovery phase or the competitive phase so for each phase we have developed a uh, different kinds of nutri bars and the like sachets that are like to be given exactly after the training phase so that is energy dense or the nutrient dense rich in proteins so and thirdly we are also focusing on the vegan or the plant based diets where the basically what is happening is instead of taking or consuming the uh, non vegetarian diets that are also uh, adding to the saturated fats so we can add on these uh, uh, almond products or plant based products where the protein we are getting the same the palatability would be the same and the texture and the other things can also be enhanced so this is how we are contributing yeah. plus i would like to add like for the uh, this um, icds we are also developing certain products for integrated child development services with the women and child development take home rations mm-hmm. though there is a constraint of cost uh, because uh, there is a cost constraint for children uh, pregnant and lactating mm-hmm. mothers but what we need to do is within that cost frame if we um, uh, add on these substitutes which can cut the cost but give the same amount of calories and proteins that is also to be considered where we are contributing is like so we are working very closely with government of haryana government of kerala madhya pradesh where we have developed certain value added products and we have added this almond or jackfruit or like indigenous crops so that to enhance the protein value and to uh, like meet out the recommended dietary allowances for the vulnerable section of the society that is the children and the pregnant and lactating women so one more question though you have covered it to some extent is what are the characteristics of almonds which should be attractive for food manufacturers to leverage like uh, as uh, you mentioned in your uh, presentation itself what we need to see is first is the crunchiness and the texture and uh, the uh, like when we add any uh, almonds to the food that crunchiness is required like for when we are adding it to the bars uh, so uh, that crunchiness or uh, this um, the taste and the flavor that is enhanced so those things are to be can considered then the se- all the sensory attributes regarding like color even the color of the almond we see the there is a variation in variety to variety but depending upon there are different kinds of uh, when we are adding it to different products that is also enhancing the appeal or the appearance of the final product then the flavor then again the flavor like it has a nutty flavor whenever we are adding it is not only the sweet uh, it is being added to the sweet or the dessert now we are also adding almonds to the salt or the savory dishes also like the chicken curries and uh, the things we are adding the for creaminess also we are adding this uh, almonds to the products so all the sensory attributes or the overall acceptability has to be checked and the palatability is enhanced so these are the things where we need to focus on so thank you dr chohan for these insights in the food processing innovation how almonds can play a role in these advancements 
I'm sure Niftum with his own role in encouraging uh, even further adoption of nutrition ingredients like uh, almonds. Now what I'm going to do is really, um, we're almost out of time here, but I guess we have time for one or two questions, which if anybody wants to ask any questions of a kind of. Yeah, sure. Yeah, my question is uh, to you. Uh, see, we uh, in India, we are lower middle or middle class family as a whole. So, I want to know that you are from the island board of California. Do you source your almonds from India? The other question is, as a consumer side, because we are Okay, I will try to understand one thing at the beginning. It is not possible that the oil is removed from the oil. Because the oil is in its cell structure. The only way you can remove it is by crushing it. You can't have almonds and remove oil. This is a myth in Indian consumers. It's not possible. How do you say that the oil is removed from the oil? It's not possible. See, you cannot, this is the composition of almond is 50% fat and in that monounsaturated fat, the most important thing is that it can't be removed. It is inside the almond and what you are saying is that the in general shrinkage of almond can be overall, which means the water has gone out, not tail. There is no way you can take out the oil. The second thing, you are wrong. You don't have to worry about it. Almond, this is wrong. What we have studied, all of us have done without worrying about it, with the whole almond. And if you take it out, then you will get a lot of health benefits. So, if you are wrong, don't do it. When we were in India, we had to take it out. 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 This is the science basin. अगर आपको नहीं उसको उचित लगता है तो आप वैसे ही करिए। ये ये अलग वैरायटीज हैं। तो काजी काजी जो बादाम है वो इंडिया में नहीं होते, वो यूएस में नहीं होते, वो होता है अफगानिस्तान में। तो बादाम का अलग-अलग वैरायटीज है। कैलिफोर्निया में भी तीस से ज़्यादा वैरायटीज ग्रो होती ह आपका अनसैचुरेटेड फैट होता है सबके लिए अच्छा ही होता है पर फिजिकल कैरेक्टर्स से अलग हो सकता है साइज हाँ उसका कितना हार्डनेस है उसका कलर है वो अलग अलग हो सकता है बट हमारे यदि अब प्रमोशन देखते हैं हम कभी ये नहीं बोलते कि सिर्फ कैलिफोर्निया बादाम खाओ हम बोले बादाम अच्छा है सबके लिए तो वो ही हमारा स्टैंस होता है
wrong notion, ma'am. Absolutely wrong. And uh, th there's a clear evidence that if you take the whole almond depletion factors are much more, then and also like mentioned, gut health will be much better, and fiber will be much better. So please don't soak the almond if you are taking it. If you want to take it properly, rest is all traditional. You know, there's so many things which are traditional which are wrong. So this we we, we have been correcting it in all medical conferences in all. All our, our studies which have shown benefit have done with almonds which have not been soaked. Sorry? Quantity of almonds that you consume is wrong. Very good question. Now this is the practical question that uh, needed to be asked actually. Uh, we, we, in our study which we did, we in the snacks, as far as snacks are concerned, we gave one ounce of almond, which is around 20 to 23 almonds, uh, divided into 14 portions in the people who had diabetes. Okay. In a preloading study, we yeah. gave 20 almonds three times a day within the prescribed calorie limit, which is a high load of almonds. So this, this is the study part of it. Now, what is the practical part of it? What I advise to my patients is take handful of almond, divide into two, one in the mid-morning and one at the mid-evening or night time. This will be enough to give you good benefit and satiety and may lead to betterment of your sugar as well as betterment of your weight. Okay, now we are completely out of, out of time here. So I'll have to close it here. If you have any questions, we have a booth in Hall 1. Uh, it's uh, H11. But thank you for all the panelists for the invaluable insights. Today's discussion shown the tremendous potential of almonds in India's health and food processing sectors. As we move forward, we hope to continue these important conversations and collaborations. We invite everyone to keep the dialogue going and work together in ensuring a versatile, nutrient-dense product like almonds is leveraged to help the health of Indians at large. Thank you for your participation. Yeah, just a moment, just everyone. First of all, is for Dr. Mitra. Thank you.